Hey, you guys, welcome back to Michael Claire to Arts. Man, it's been, uh, what, just like two seconds since I made a video for you guys? What is this? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of videos uh, lately, just reviews of products. It is, of course, the end of the year, and you have a lot of companies just inundating me with stuff to do, which is really fun. I love doing reviews for you guys, just because it kind of gives you an insight as to what is important in the artistic environment, what is important in the studio environment, right? You know, from peripherals to tablets to computers, you know, and even the things that we kind of overlook that end up being a big deal. And that is why I'm doing this video today. Um, as noted in the thumbnail, I am doing a review of a space heater. Um, it, it sounds kind of weird that, you know, an artistic channel is going to be doing a review of a space heater. But I think it's important because some of us don't live in the tropics <laughs> where temperature doesn't get below 70 degrees, right? I lived in Florida for years and years, and the um, the central heat was just fine for, you know, the everyday use in my studio. And most of the time, it really didn't even get below 50 degrees. And if it did, it was winter, right? 50? <laughs> it kind of makes me laugh now. I live in the very north part of Georgia in the Appalachian Mountains. And elevation here is about 2,200 to 3,000 feet. So it gets a little chilly occasionally uh, in the winter months. And being in the studio, um, you know, drawing and, and staying in this environment for any length of time, uh, this, of course, being an older house, the central heat works great, but just to warm the room up quickly and efficiently, I needed something that, you know, that would heat the room up and not make uh, a ton of noise. And that's the big factor right there, that last part that I said. Something I need that doesn't make a ton of noise. Um you know, whenever I draw, I like to have quiet. And, you know, you're like, why don't you just wear headphones? And I do wear headphones, but I've got probably about seven pair of really high-end headphones. And, you know, having it encased in my ear, I just sometimes I want a little bit more freedom. I don't want something on my head all the time. And having a heater that does its job efficiently, doesn't cost a lot of money, has a lot of safety features, and uh, effectively doesn't disrupt my drawing and, and my creation here in my studio. Because this is my job. This is what I do for a living. I'm in this studio for eight, nine, ten hours a day uh, during the week, you know, if, if I don't take any time off. And I want to be able to rely upon the products that I have, whether it's, you know, whether it's a tablet that doesn't break down, use a lot of power, whether it's a light, whether, you know, whatever it is, I want the studio to be kind of my safe haven. So I got contacted by a company by the name of Faraday, and they were like, hey, we're interested in you doing a review because they like some of the reviews that I do. I post stuff, you know, on YouTube of, of uh, you know, stuff that makes sense for me to review. And uh, I've actually got an Amazon influencer account now, so I post the videos on there as well. And uh, that really helps people out in making decisions, um, especially if you're an artist. So the Space Eater they sent over uh, currently list on Amazon for 60 bucks. And, uh, you know, you can get a deal. There's deals all the time. Black Friday, there's Christmas deals. Right now it's for $49. So $49, you get a heater that, um, you know, has a thermostat, it's got safety features, it's got quick cutoff, it's got a rotation, um, a rotation <clears throat> uh, feature on it. You know, it's not that heavy, it weighs about six and a half to seven pounds. Um, you know, and overall, it's just a great little device that I think would help anyone. You know, if you've got uh, a limited space and you want something to help you out, it just plugs into the wall and, and you can, you can, you know, heat up your uh, environment and it'll be great. The thing that I, I still have to stress is the fact that it is quiet and, you know, we're going to get into looking at the device. We're going to turn it on. We're going to set it up. I'm going to use it and then I'm going to use it for about two weeks. And, uh, I do that because I just don't want to set the device up and use it and, you know, say, it, you know, recommend it because I, I don't really have a feeling of exactly what it is capable of. And, you know, something like this is very important um, because in today's day and age, you get products that are kind of junky and janky and crappy and they don't last. And uh, this hopefully won't be uh, something that uh, does that. And right now I'm looking on Amazon and right now there's a coupon. You can apply $15 to the purchase 
of the fan and it ends up being you know like $35 and with free shipping if you have Prime. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing then um, I'm going to use it. You know, it's not going to be anything exciting. If you're looking for excitement and me drawing and doing a bunch of stuff uh, for this, then, you know, you probably need to move on and click one of my other videos uh, as far as drawing goes, because this is just about the comfort and environment. Now, if this was an air conditioner, I'd treat it the same way, right? I want to use it and make sure that the air conditioner works. But this is a heater, again, by Faraday, and we're going to go ahead and do the unboxing and use it. Okay, here is the box. Um that it came in, I believe. Actually, it came in an Amazon box, and this is the box inside of a box. Shows the unit on the side, no color printing, and that's not, you know, this is an industrial product, meaning it's function over form, right? I mean, at this price point of $50, because right now it's Black Friday, which is awesome. Even at retail of 80 bucks, you know, to get a space heater that has remote control and touch, thermostat, timers, and all these other, you know, higher end, let's go ahead and turn the light up a little bit, these higher end uh, elements, you know, that, that price point is just ridiculously low, 50 bucks. Okay, so we're greeted with some styrofoam and the user manual, which is great. Shows you some of the functionality, how to use, level surface at least three feet away from any wall or combustible material that makes sense a lot of this is just common sense whenever it comes to operating items like this you know if you have a question please contact them safety instructions obviously don't put it in water <laughs> that's important right common common things that we all as consumers really kind of adhere to and one of them being don't put your electronics in water yeah Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and bring it out. Where's the handle? There it is. I said, I know there's a handle. Yep, it comes out. Actually, it doesn't. Why aren't you coming out? There it goes. Wrapped in plastic. And all, look at all this. Wow. Okay, so let's go ahead. We have warning labels. Do not remove this tag to reduce the risk of fire and hypothermia. Okay, so obviously this being a heater, it does have a heated element in there and being a 1500 watt. Now you have to understand that, you know, 1500 watts. What is, what is that? That is a lot of wattage because if you figure a 60 watt bulb, right? 60 watts <laughs> is in your ceiling and you have four of those, right? That's 240 watts for maybe your average light. So you basically, this takes as much electricity as, you know, six, <laughs> six average room lights. So it's, I hate to say not energy efficient, but the reality is, is whenever you involve heat and electricity, there is an element there that you just have to allow to happen, which is allow it to heat up. Okay, so overall, well right now it's got a, uh, the rotating base, so it's probably got some servos in there that turn the unit. It says, warning risk of heat stroke. Wow, hyperthermia. Death in infants or others can also, okay, so obviously this gets really warm and if you have it in an enclosed area for an extended amount of time it probably would raise it significant that's why it does have uh, a thermostat in it and that's important to note because some of the heaters don't right here we are with the remote control very nice very nice one of the things that is a pet peeve no batteries ah! That is a pet peeve of mine, right? You can't splurge 79 cents for batteries. <sighs> anyway, it is what it is. So here is another warning. High temperatures keep electrical cords, drapery, and other things away from, at least by three feet, from the heater itself. And here we go. This is also something to note. So here's the handle right here. This probably is the dust filter. This is the intake where the air goes in. Over time, it will collect dust on the screen because you do not want dust on the element. 
because what does that do? It burns and it smells, right? And that's what happens whenever you turn your, your heater on after it not being on all summer. The dust that it's on the elements burns and it smells terrible. That's because it's, little note you guys, it's gross. <laughs> We're not gonna tell you what it is. Anyway, so cord, very industrial, very well made, not flimsy at all. This is something obviously that they think about whenever they do these things. And it's secured inside of the base as well. Okay. It is attractive. It is not obtrusive. We're gonna leave this caution warning on the side just for now. So what we're gonna do, see if I have any plastic to remove anything like that. No, this is all metal right here. You know, on some of the other ones that I looked at, uh, it was plastic. So this is a very nice unit. Overall, fit and finish, the quality, the lines are really good. The printing, uh, the tampo printing on the front showing who manufactured the unit is very good. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna plug it in. I've gotta go hunt for some batteries. Hunting, battery hunting. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and just kind of get a feel for it, okay? My battery hunt was successful. Batteries installed into the remote control. Now, so I've plugged it in. It gave a little beep whenever I plugged it in, which was awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. The uh, functions of the remote control are extremely clear. We go from power button to rotation right here. This is probably the mode button to show eco, high, low, and it probably has a fan setting as well. And then here's the timer and you click the timer and you can adjust the uh, the hour, <laughs> 12 hour timer. So it can stay on for two hours, one hour, three hours, and then it shuts itself off. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the time. We're gonna hit the power button. Currently it's in the fan mode. So let's click the M. We're at eco. So I have the temperature currently at 74 degrees. It reads the temperature inside this room currently is 67. So you can understand this room, I have the central heat on, this room is cool, right? All the time. I can tell you right now, and this is just me talking regular, I don't know if you can hear it or not, it is extremely quiet. Wow. So we're gonna go ahead and hit mode again. Now it's on high. I don't really understand. Wow, okay, so there you go. There's a difference, wow. So I went from eco, which probably has a lower temperature and a lower wattage cons consumation. Um, but whenever you click it on high, that is warm. I mean, probably right about here, here is my limit, right? That's about seven to eight inches, actually, yeah, probably right about there. That's warm, okay? So we're gonna click mode again. Now we're in low. Okay, not as intense as high, but still very warm. And then we're gonna click the M one more time. Now we're in fan mode. So the elements have been turned off and now it's just circulating the air, right? Just circulating the air, causing a little bit of a breeze, which is really nice. Okay, so we're gonna click mode again, back to eco. We're gonna go down a little bit, down to 70 degrees. I don't need to burn my face off. And we're gonna click the rotation. I don't know what the distance is, and this is something that I will definitely test in my testing period, because I typically like to have a, about a week of using the unit, and then I do a final wrap up. I can barely, I can barely hear it. Oh, this is gonna be fantastic. LED is very clear, shows you the mode that we're in, shows you the current temperature of the room, shows that it is indeed plugged in. Now there are some touch features on the top. If indeed you do lose the remote control, 
basically the features that are on the remote control are mirrored on top. So if I were to click the top, it's touch. And it does everything that you need to that you would have on the remote control. So then we're going to go to the timer feature. We're going to go ahead and wait till it circulates back. Okay. We're going to click it stops. We're going to click the timing feature. Currently is it at one hour? Two hours. So now once it stops blinking, now in two hours the unit will completely shut down. I don't have to worry once I go to sleep that the unit will still be on. Or I can just forego the timer and just have it on a specific temperature and feel comfortable the knowing that whenever it reaches that temperature, like say, let's say it reaches 70 degrees, because I'm going to go ahead and hit that again, I want it to be 70. So maybe I don't want it to be that warm inside the room. Maybe 67 is my temperature. Once it reaches 67, the unit will cycle down and wait until the temperature drops again. Very similar to climate control uh, in your car or air conditioning in your home. All right, so let's go ahead and install it in its home and we will use it for a week. And I will tell you how well the Faraday space heater for indoor use worked for me. One of the things that I think I failed to mention is the safety features. So obviously if it's on high, you want to keep your distance from the front of the heater because as noted in the high setting and even in the eco setting, having your hand too close to this will obviously um, result in discomfort. Um, but here, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to test something because this is something that pretty much the majority of the heaters regardless of the price point if you knock the heater over it automatically turns itself off so we're just going to take it there you go and it automatically shut itself off so that's important to note because if you have children if you have dogs if you have any type of uh, activity in your home or in your room or maybe you're you know backing up your chair and you knock the unit over then it will automatically turn itself off. It has a, uh, a level sensor in there that again is something that I've seen on uh, a few units out there. And uh, I'm not surprised that this particular unit made by Faraday does indeed have that safety feature. So let's go ahead and turn it back on and get back to enjoying the heat. Okay, so it's been just a little bit of time since uh, I put the Faraday uh, space heater into play here in my studio. And, uh, you know, I don't like reviewing products unless I actually use them, right? Some reviewers will sit down and, you know, they'll unbox it and they'll look at it and take some B-roll uh, footage of it and say, oh, you know, this is a good option for you in the studio and, or in, you know, in your house. And I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I used it for about a week and a half and, so far, it has been absolutely flawless, right? One of the big hangups that I have as far as heaters go and, you know, things that I have in my studio, it, it has to do with sound, right? My old heater was super loud and it was very distracting. And even if I had noise cancellation headphones on it, I typically could hear it in the background. And even though that particular unit was, you know, a little bit older, it still did not have the capability that the Faraday unit has. Um, first of all, you know all of the options that it has, from the rotation to the uh, to the timer to the um, you know to the safety features. Also, the fact that it puts out a copious amounts of heat and it heats the environment here in the studio uh, very quickly. So do I recommend this unit for the studio environment? Absolutely. It's quiet. It's whisper quiet to the point where I don't even have to raise my voice whenever I'm speaking on a Zoom call or I'm speaking uh, on the telephone or any type of other video uh, interface device. Um, and the fact that it has a remote control and I don't have to get up out of my chair, disturb my workflow, I can just sit there and I can hit it 
with the remote control very easily. Um, it's a smaller unit, right? It's, it's not large and it's not heavy. So in the duration here in the mountains uh, where I have to, right, living in an old farmhouse, I have to move the heater to different places. And, you know, in the past, the heater was a little bit heavier and it was it was awkward and, you know, it being skinnier, the platform didn't, didn't work out very well. And the Faraday unit, you know, I'm able to pick it up. It's got that handle, transport it to the next room, set it down, right? We've used it uh, in, our, uh, in our bedroom. We've used it in our kitchen. And this unit literally, it's one of those things that in the studio, if you don't have it and you're sitting there shivering or you have to use the central heating. Now, a lot of you are like, well, I don't need that. I have central heating. Well, I have central heating too, but the cost of propane is like $4, $5 a gallon now. So even though whenever it gets really cold, right, this is a great supplemental unit for you guys to have. And at the price point that it is, uh, you can definitely say, um, that you're not going to break the bank in doing it. So big shout out to the guys over at Faraday for providing this unit uh, for me to review. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of reviews on the channel and a lot of times uh, I'll, I'll give my honest opinion, but there's always like that one negative thing that you just kind of throw in there at the end and say, it would be absolutely perfect if it didn't do X, Y, and Z, right? But with the Faraday unit, I can safely say that this unit pretty much performed flawlessly and it is a perfect studio or home companion to heat up your tootses, your, you know, your hands. Um, and, and, you know, if you come in from the cold, like it's here, here it's, you know, 25 degrees sometimes for the high, 15 degrees for the high. So it gets pretty cold up here in the mountains here at Elevation. So anyway, thank you guys for watching the channel. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the review and uh, definitely uh, check the Faraday unit out. I've got the link down in the description and, uh, you know, We'll uh, keep reviewing stuff as, as long as I'm here on the, on the YouTube platform. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, you'll give the people over at Faraday some consideration. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.